Hello, everyone. I'm here with two of my colleagues, Dr. Na Zhao and Dr. Alex Holland, and have recently released a report, Friday Tech X, talking about lithium ion battery recycling. So, Alex, firstly, why is this a hot topic now? Yeah, thanks, Raghu. Um, I suppose, you know, the first reason is that we're expecting to see a pretty strong growth in battery electric vehicles. Um, and obviously the demand for lithium ion batteries here is going to cause a pretty substantial growth in the raw materials that are used within them. Um, but of course, over the past few months, as I'm sure many of you are aware, there's been a lot of discussion around the robustness of different supply chains for different products, um, medical products in particular. Um, but this is a discussion which has been happening within the lithium ion industry for a few years now, with there being quite a lot of localization with certain materials within uh, the lithium ion supply chain. Um, and recycling is one way to alleviate those stresses of relying on certain countries, certain areas with regards to those raw materials. So um, Europe, for example, um, really doesn't have a lot of raw material resource when it comes to lithium or cobalt or natural graphite. And so recycling could be a really critical and important um, resource to build up a European supply chain for these materials and therefore limit reliance on China, uh, on Congo and other areas and build up that industry from scratch uh, within European uh, countries. And you're seeing similar things as well from the US. They've built up a similar list of materials where they're listing things like lithium on that, seeing the strategic value of these materials and the potential growth in that lithium ion industry. So the chart on the left here is really quite striking. If I understand that correctly, it looks like that we will have to move to recycling at some point over the next decade because the mine output may not be able to keep up with the, um, the demand, particularly for lithium. Would that be correct? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the, the growth in demand for lithium is really going to outpace the growth that we're seeing from the mining industry. Um, just a note on that, recycling alone probably isn't going to be enough um, to meet that demand, but it certainly could be an important part of that picture. Thank you. And so now, um, in, in terms of what is the value of recycling batteries, do you have data on that within the report you've written? Yeah, thanks, Raghu. Um, so in our new lithium ion battery recycling report, we address the, um, the value of recycling. So we, we think that the value of uh, recycling lithium ion batteries depends not only on the metal prices, but also on the um, cathode chemistries. So on the slide here we show, um, you can see here, like de depending on the um, different chemistries, we have um, uh, different estimated value of recycling the valuable metals of um, lithium ion batteries. So here the graph here shows them uh, estimated value of recycling uh, the metals of a 60 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack um, by different chemistries. Um, so LCO is the, uh, ma uh, the main uh, chemistries used in consumer electronics, um, but not in any of the electric vehicles. So here we just use the LCO here as the reference point here. Um, and NMC batteries are uh, is one of the most popular uh, cathode chemistries for electric vehicle batteries. And here we can see that um, the NMC 111 batteries, uh, they have the highest recycling value at current metal prices, of course. And with the industry moving towards NMC, um, like as the industry moving from uh, moving towards higher um, nickel and lower cobalt content. Uh, so for example, from an MC111 to an MC811, we will see a decrease uh, in the recycling value uh, of the batteries. And, um, and uh, um, other types of chemistry such as LMO and LFP, they have uh, even much lower uh, recycling value compared to an MC ch uh, chemistries because they do not contain any um, uh, cobalt or nickel but uh, it really depends on how uh, future metal prices changes uh, but this basically shows um, like the value of recycling you can get is the recycling technologies and techniques are they consistent for the different uh, chemistry types you have here is it one main process or well, what does the landscape look like in terms of the actual mechanics of recycling 
Yes, yeah, so I suppose I can um, chime in on that for, for LCO, which has been around for quite a few years now in consumer electronics. Um, we've had a lot of recycling using kind of heat, using pyrometallurgical techniques, uh, which is enough to recover the, the cobalt in that LCO, which is obviously of the, the most value. Um, but as we move towards NMC materials, um, especially as we move towards those high nickel variants, as Nar mentioned, um, it's probably not going to be enough just to rely on the recovery of cobalt uh, and nickel. And you're probably going to have to you know, recover lithium, uh, copper foils, aluminium foils, potentially even graphite and electrolyte as well. And for mm. that, we're really seeing a lot of interest from new projects and new companies looking at mechanical techniques as well as uh, wet chemistry and hydrometallurgical techniques to, to regain that value from a cathode, which is intrinsically less valuable. Right. And um, there's also, you know, beyond electric vehicles, companies, and it's something you've written about before now, are looking to recycle them as a second life. So use them, for example, for stationary applications. So backup power supply or with renewable energies. How does recycled batteries fit into all of that? Is a lot of the recycling done for these second life batteries? Or do you see that transitioning from um, to, to automotive batteries being then immediately recycled? Um, thanks, Raghu. So um, basically looking um, through the EV battery value chain from that value chain, life cycle value chain perspective. Um, so really recycling is the uh, last step to close the loop of uh, the EV battery value chain. So whether it's a hot discussion now whether we should recycle those batteries directly or we should do second life first. Um, but either uh, we, we need to recycle those batteries in the end anyway. It's just a matter of time. So, for example, after the batteries retire from the electric vehicles, if we do re, uh, if we do second life battery, so for example, we repurpose the uh, uh, retired EV batteries into a stationary energy storage application. Uh, we may extend the battery life by another five to ten years or even longer. But by that end of the second life, you need to recycle those batteries in the end. So it's uh, just a matter of like time, but that time uh, shift might change the economics of uh, recycling uh, because uh, for the time being, for most recycling companies, um, the recycling cost is still very high. Um, so Second Life could be a potential solution to postpone that recycling phase, uh, which might help turning a recycling into a profit in the future. Uh, but in the end, you also depend on other factors, for example, the metal pro future metal prices, future uh, battery technologies, et cetera. Um, so I would say um, Second Life, uh, it's a new topic because of um, the, uh, the uniqueness of end-of-life EV batteries. So uh, for our um, consumer uh, electronics batteries, uh, you will just recycle them. Uh, you, don't, you never think about Second Life. But for electric vehicle batteries, because at the end of their um, vehicle life, they might still contain up to 70 to 80 percent of their original capacity, which could be further utilized in less demanding applications. So it really depends on uh, individual companies' strategies, uh, whether they uh, would like to uh, extend those battery life to generate uh, additional revenues or they want to uh, directly recycle those batteries. Um, another uh, important point I want to uh, mention here is um, I think according to my interviews with uh, those different uh, market players, uh, whether uh, they want to do recycling or second life, uh, it also depends on what kind of uh, chemistries those batteries are. So for example, for BYD in China, uh, we know that uh, they are the main uh, electric bus manufacturers. Um, and the uh, the many uh, and they are the major uh, producers for LFP batteries. So they are very interested in second life instead of recycling because uh, as a, as a graph show here, LFP chemistry have um, very low recycling value at the time being. So second life might be a better choice for them. Yeah. So I, I so this is basically what I see uh, uh, from my research on both the second life and recycling perspective. Fascinating. Well, thanks very much, Nar. Thanks so much, Alex. And uh, for more information about this topic, take a look at the IDTechX report, Lithium-Ion Battery Recycling, which has a huge amount of data behind all of this. And we also have related reports on Second Life Battery as well. Thank you.